to Lounging Lizards, where my lizards are still lounging. Uh, today I'm going to talk about some of the things that I didn't put into the first video for tank setups. Uh, came to my attention that there were a few things that I should have mentioned uh, that I completely forgot to mention, so um, we're going to go through some of the things that were brought up um, to me from a comment on the last video. So. Let's uh, let's get going, shall we? Because leopard geckos have such sensitive eyes, you want to make sure that you're only using lights in two in the two ways that I suggest. One is that you want to use it if you're only giving calcium without D3. If you're giving calcium with D3, lighting should not be. You don't need to include it. Um, another thing is that they. They are nocturnal, and if you have them in a dark area in your house, let's say you have a basement and there's not a lot of light down there, then yes, absolutely put a light so that they know with their internal clocks what time it is and so that they know when to come out and when to go back into their hides. Um, you know, and it's just, it's just something that you really want to keep open to, but you don't want to say, I'm not going to get lights for them because I don't need it. If you want to get them, go ahead. You can have them. Reptile carpet is great substrate. It is not loose. It doesn't harbor a lot of bacteria. A lot of people will say, oh, it harbors a lot of it, but if you clean it up right and while you're cleaning it, you know, you letting it dry and whatnot, um, clean out the cage as well. You don't want to just clean it and then put it back into an already dirty cage. You want to make sure you're wiping the cage clean. Um, people say that their toes and their nails get caught in there. I've never had an issue with it. Um, I will say that I feel like sometimes put the, they put them on the wrong side. Uh, a lot of the times we'll put them on the on the fluffy side uh, where the fibers stick out more. If you flip it over, there's a bit of a rougher, thinner side. Use that side. They don't get their teeth caught. I've never had an issue with their toes getting ripped off from it. So, you know... Um, that's pretty much it. I, you know, yeah. <laughs> Moist hides are great if you are a first time leopard gecko owner. I encourage you to definitely get, make a moist hide. You can make it out of a plastic uh, food container. Uh, you basically just have the lid on there and you take the lid and you put a hole in there roughly a little bit bigger than the size of your gecko. And you line it with paper towel or you can use sphagnum moss, eagle earth, whatever to keep it nice and moist. Um, but if you're like me and your geckos shed around the same time during uh, the span of a week, um, I basically just doubled the warm hide as a humid hide uh, throughout the span of a week for them. Uh, and usually I'll just take a, a water bottle, like a sprayer, spray down their mats and then they're fine. I've never had an issue with that, which is why I kind of uh, forgot to mention it because I'm so used to doing it. So yeah. Calcium dishes are also very important for leopard geckos. Um, they can eat powdered uh, calcium right up out of a dish. So providing them with that uh, every day is critical. Um, my all of my geckos except for one refuse to eat powdered calcium so my trick is that I get liquid calcium and I put it into their water and they drink it up and I've never I haven't had an issue with it um, and it's readily available all the time because I can never consciously not put a water dish in with my animals so you know um, yeah and a lot of the times people will buy like the the reptile themed things you don't need to just use like an 8 ounce deli cup lid you're good to go it'll be easy for them to get into so yeah another thing I forgot to mention that I do actually own is a rheostat or it's also called a thermostat um, they are amazing they help control the temperatures um, especially where I live temperatures are pretty um, up and down in terms of um, you know degrees um, throughout the year so it does help 
with that so I would strongly suggest getting either a digital one or you can get one that is just the dial I think it's from Zoomed, Zoomed Rheostat yeah um, they help immensely especially during the winters so I would suggest that you get your hands on one of those as well just to control the temperatures um, and try hooking it up to a uh, reptile heat cable um, and those have a bit more wattage to work with so yeah we could do that and finally the last one is uh, temperature gauges and temp guns um, I would strongly suggest a temperature gun uh, you can go on eBay you can probably find one for about 12 bucks at the cheapest um, they're more accurate than a analog one um, but if you want to go pretty simple use an analog one and put it close to where their heat source is um, near the bottom uh, don't put it all the way up at the top in the middle of the cage that's not going to read anything accurately and you're going to be constantly worried um, but you know I would I would more or less suggest a temperature gun like an infrared heat infrared temp gun instead of a analog one um, you can get ones with little probes um, but my thing was I used to have them and my geckos would get tangled up in them so um, you know temp guns are probably your best bet I'm hoping that this second video will help you to really get into keeping your animals healthy and happy um, and to the person that left the comment on the last video thank you very much for pointing out things that I completely forgot about um, when I am filming I don't necessarily remember some of the things that I'm supposed to say so thank you very much um, and yeah that's pretty much it so thank you for watching like and subscribe the channel and till next time my lizards are still going to be lounging bye bye